What's going on my exotic family, it's your boy Dre. Welcome back to another video. I'm very, very sorry that I did not post any videos last week. Last week was just crazy busy for me. Um, so I did not get around to posting videos. I'm busy with work and just everything. Um, but I'm back posting videos this week. Um, the videos will be posted on different days, obviously, because today is Wednesday and you guys are just now seeing this video and my next one will be posted on Friday. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I still give you guys that content. Um, I'm not disappearing or stopping YouTube or anything. It's just been a little busy, so I'm just trying to do my best to keep up. Anyways, back to the video. Um, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite colubrids, which is Mexican Black King Snake. Um, this is my King Snake. This is T'Challa. If I can get the camera to focus here. So this is T'Challa, my Mexican black king snake. He's still fairly small. Um, I don't really highlight my colubrids nearly as much as I probably should. Um, but nonetheless, um, this guy still deserves a video because these guys are very, very popular. And I think it's important that we should know how to take care of them, correct? So without further ado, let's jump right to the intro. <laughs> All right, everybody, so welcome back to the video. So like I said, I'm here with my Mexican black king snake, T'Challa. Um, if you guys don't know, I feel like it's kind of obvious, but he is an all black snake, or he will be eventually, um, but he's a king snake. So, you know, T'Challa, if you've seen Black Panther, that's where he got his name from. Um, so these guys actually are native to obviously Mexico and then as well as Arizona. Um, they like um, desert areas, um, very arid temperatures. Um, they don't like a lot of humidity. Um, now the cool thing about these guys is, um, I know I just showed a close up of him. Um, this guy actually still has, let me see if I can zoom it. You see, he still has some gold speckling on him. And I've actually had a lot of people actually question if he was crossed with a California King snake or anything like that. No, he was not. Um, these guys are actually, some of them actually come out with a gold banding. And as they get older, the gold banding goes away and they get dark. Um, when I first got this guy, he was like completely striped. He was completely striped. Um, a lot of that has gone away. I um, mean, he, he does have that um, very nice shiny belly that those uh, Mexican black king snakes are known for. So um, I'm sure I'll probably get a question on the video of what he is or if he's mixed with anything, but no, he is not. Um, the breeder that I got him from is a very trustworthy person. So um, I just wanna throw that out there before we get into the video. Um, but like I said, these guys are native to um, Mexico and um, Arizona. They like it very, uh, very hot. Um, it's very air temperature, very dry, no humidity. Um, so they are a desert species. Um, so as far as um, in captivity, um, they can be kept many a ways. Um, also, I mean, it's gonna depend on where you live. These guys are native to the desert, but depending on where you live, the humidity may be a little different. I'm in the Midwest, so the humidity here is somewhat higher, especially this time of year. Um, so I keep him in an 18 by 18. Um, he's still pretty small. I don't trust him in my rack quite yet. I don't think he'd get out. I just, I feel safer with him knowing he's not in there. And I don't have to come check on him every five minutes. So he stays up on the top shelf in an Exoterra. Um, and I have basically um, his warm side, his cool side, and then I have his water dish. Um, so we can talk about temperature. So um, these guys um, like temperatures right around 88 to 90. I keep his basking spot right around 89. I always try to aim for right in the middle. Um, that way he has a pretty decent ambient of around, of about maybe um, like 85, 86 in the, uh, in the enclosure. And then on the warm side, it's about 78. Um, so I have a pretty nice size water dish in there um, because like I said, with them being desert creatures, I do not spray him down often. I spray him maybe, maybe uh, three to four times a week um, versus most of my other snakes get sprayed daily, some twice daily. Um, but this guy, um, I get, he, he gets sprayed down um, maybe two to three times a week. I'm sorry, three to four times a week. So, um, as far as temperature, um, 88 to 90. Now, as far as um, humidity, um, like I said, these guys don't like a bunch of humidity. So, um, his is kept very dry. Like I said, I don't spray him down often, but that's also why I have that water dish in there um, just to give that right amount of uh, humidity if he, if he needs it, but also if he wants to soak in it or if he wants to drink, I mean, obviously if he wants to drink out of it. He's not a very big snake, so um, the 
uh, water bowl isn't huge, but it's big enough to where he can fit in. Um, he is roughly, roughly uh, 15 inches or so. Um, so he's still a fairly small, small little guy. I got, he's about a year, a uh, year old coming soon or no, no, he's a little older than a year old. He's, he's young, whatever. I didn't look at the um, paperwork before I started the video. Um, now, as far as substrate, um, like I said, these guys like it dry. Um, so I keep him on Aspen, um, which is a very dry substrate, um, which is also another reason why I don't spray too often is because once you, you spray Aspen too much, it does mold. Um, but that's the reason I used it anyways, because it's not really meant to be sprayed a lot. So um, King Snake and the Rat Snake are the only two snakes that I have that actually use Aspen. And I like it. I think it's perfect for them um, because it's great for these guys are burrowing snakes. Um, you know, if it gets if it does get too hot um, out in the wild in the desert, um, they will burrow in rodent tunnels um, to stay cool, and then they'll come out at night to go hunting. Um, so um, I keep about three, you know, a nice chunk, a nice thick layer of aspen in the enclosure, just so he is able to burrow um, as well as the two hides um so i definitely want to give him his options and then as well as he can imitate that natural behavior whether he can burrow he can go in one hide go in the other hide but either way he can get away from the heat if he chooses now um as far as tank size these guys they don't get huge um they get about the same size as a ball python right around three to four foot so you can imagine as an adult um the smallest enclosure you want to keep these guys in is um a three foot um screen enclosure uh, me personally i don't want any of my snakes in anything smaller than a four by two by two so once he gets you know full size that is what he'll be going in um but as you guys can see we have a pretty long time for that um so we will definitely grow him out and I will update you guys along the way. Um, like I said, I've already had him for about a year. Um, so he's not new. Um, he's been on my Instagram. I just haven't had yet the opportunity to do a video on him. So that's why we're doing this video on him tonight. And they're very pretty snakes. Um, a lot of people think they're a little aggressive um, or defensive. I mean, I know they can be nippy, but I personally feel like any snake can be nippy. Um, but these guys are pretty cool. He's pretty laid back. He's a little skittish when I'm getting him out. He will musk, um, but once he's out, he's fine. Somewhat like the white lip, except the white lip actually will bite. So, um, um, talked about temperature. So feeding, um, these guys actually, the cool thing about them is obviously they're called king snakes and they get their name from their ability to eat other snakes. They are cannibals um, because they do have um, an immuneness to um, venomous snakes or rattlesnakes um, that would be native to where they're from. So they're immune to that venom. So they will actually kill those rattlesnakes and they will eat them. Um, however, in captivity, that is not required um, that you feed snakes. They do just fine on rodents. Um, so um, you don't have to feed them snakes. Some people do it. Um, I, for once, um, eventually maybe plan to do that um, just to um, give them a natural meal. Um, I, I definitely think it's important to give snakes a variety. Yes, they're doing well on the rodents. Um, however, I still would like to give them a variety. Um, but you never know. Um, as well as I plan to breed snakes, so you never know. Um, I don't expect every single clutch to come out perfect um so if i have to dispose of a snake i will make sure i record that for you guys once he is of size um but like i said these guys do fine on rodents but they will eat snakes hence their name king snakes as well as lizards um and other small creatures of the desert so that is basically it for these guys. Um, these guys are not a hard stink to keep at all. They're very interesting little guys. And like I said, they're very popular in the pet trade now. Um, everyone has them, um, but you can see why they're very pretty snakes. They kind of remind remind me of um, like a Brazilian rainbow boa, just in all black. Um, as you can see that belly gets that shimmer on it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my camera to focus. Um, it gets that shimmer on it. Um, so a lot of people, um, really like these guys and they're not expensive snakes um but yeah that's that's pretty much it for mexican black king snakes lampropeltis nagrita um i'm pretty sure i messed the name up but whatever um hope you guys enjoyed the video um once again i do apologize for not uploading last week and 
I hope you guys are staying patient with me. Um, for those of you that are watching, thank you very much. Make sure if you like the video, you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Tell me how you're doing. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the video. Um, comment what you guys want to see me record next. I don't mind. Um, as always, stay clean, stay healthy, stay exotic.